Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Consulting Trap with Brian Maddox. I'm here today uh, joined by uh, company counsel, CEO extraordinaire, Bernard Williams. Welcome, Bernard. Thank you very much. Good morning, Brian. Uh, Bernard, if you could tell us a little bit more about your background and how you, uh, how you started your firm up, that would be very helpful for our listeners. Sure. So company counsel is a small business law firm. Uh, and what we do is we help small companies to um, to, to grow and build and, and to protect themselves. And the way that I got into that was actually a little bit accidentally. Uh, I went to law school many, many, many years ago. And when I graduated, uh, my, my first job was a, a judicial clerkship. And then after that one-year clerkship, I went to work for big law. Uh, and um, and big law was a lot of things. I mean, it, it, was, it was a lot of responsibility. It was a ton of work. It was a great learning experience. Uh, but it was something that I very, very quickly realized was just not right for me. Uh, not for those reasons, of course, but, uh, but, it, but it just wasn't really the kind of an environment that, that I knew that I was going to thrive in long term. Uh, so I ultimately, uh, it, a- after going from one big law firm to, to another, uh, in one city to another, uh, I ultimately realized that um, you know, I, I needed to do something on my own, uh, that my entrepreneurial destiny was calling me. Uh, so, I, so I left big law. And and I started a small business. Uh, and at the time, it was a it was a tutoring company. And my aim was to to help mostly high school students to to get better grades, to to learn study skills, uh, to get into colleges, to improve familial relationships. Uh, that was my focus. Uh, and I spent as much time and energy as I could trying to convince everybody that I could that I was an educator. Uh, you know, pay no attention to the to the law degrees. Uh, you know, focus on the um, uh, on what I'm trying to focus on now, uh, which is the the kids too. But no matter how much I resisted, everybody saw that ESQ uh, that was always kind of attached to the to the back of my name, uh, whether I put it there or not. Uh, and they would come to me with questions about contracts, about uh, employment issues, about about okay, my lease says this, can my landlord do that? Uh, and I found myself becoming the accidental expert. Uh, in the area of small business law. Uh, so while I was trying to focus on one business, everybody else um, was kind of showing me the need for another. Uh, so uh, o- over time, um, I, I, I did wind up closing that, that tutoring company. Uh, and that's probably uh, enough. Th- th- enough happened in Maddie Bennett alone that could probably fill a couple of different podcasts. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, But what... I guess from my vantage point, the best thing that came out of that uh, was the the understanding that there, that there really was this this need out there for a law firm that catered to the needs of small businesses. Uh, because for somebody like me, uh, who's a tutor at the time, uh, to be fielding to be fielding so many questions and helping so many people with their businesses, meant that there was a gap. Uh, and um, and I've been trying to fill that gap ever since with uh, with small with, with company counsel. So. When when you were confronted with this market information, how did you you, you know I, I get get the sense that you decided to make the pivot, which is great, but but when the time came to do that, what were your first couple steps? Well, the first place that I went, I wanted to go to a place where I knew that I could reach a cross section of, of the small business community, and as it happened. One of the things that I learned about networking and 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 business generation in my time as a tutoring company owner uh, was about an organization called BNI, uh, which stands for Business Networking International. Uh, it, it's a group that, um, that that puts professionals and salespeople and business owner business owners all from different professional realms together uh, in the same room, and it teaches them how to conduct business and refer uh, refer business to each other. Uh, so um, I had gotten some initial exposure to, to, to BNI uh, when I ran my tutoring company, and when I decided to launch my own firm, uh, my own law firm, uh, that's one of the places that I went. Um, I, I knew that it would be a place where I could, you know, as I said, talk to a cross section of the small business community, uh, and and begin to build a base. So, so from there, you got. Uh, yeah, it sounds like you got your first several pieces of business by referral. Um, how have you continued to grow the practice since? You know, it, so that was six years ago um, that, that the company was formed. 
Uh, and we've been fortunate to have revenue growth year over year over year. Uh, and, um, and the primary driver uh, really has been referrals, word of mouth, and, and happy clients for, for other clients. Now, over the past uh, couple of years or so, uh, we've been experimenting with, with digital marketing, with mixed success. Uh, quite frankly, uh, that's something that uh, that's a challenge we've yet to to, to solve. Um, but but that but I think for the next phase, uh, we'd like to, to augment uh, our relationship marketing uh, and um, and relationship building activities with some digital marketing campaigns. Yeah, that's um, a strategy that a lot of our uh, a lot of the guests that I've spoken with have have pursued with similar. Uh, similar outcomes that that process is a lot um, a lot of trial and error from what what I've come to see uh, with a right. lot of our guests so uh, you're in the middle of the trial or the error part most like um, well well I, well I hope that I'm near the end of it uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in the middle yeah that's so um, as you have uh, grown your practice you know, there's there's typical um, waypoints, uh, decisions that you make along the way for you know your practice and any consulting practice um, when you decide to scale and what that looks like. So, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, that journey for you and your practice? Yeah, you know, I decided early on that I wanted to grow my company in a way that's a little bit different from the way that most attorneys grow their firms. Uh, the the typical model for an attorney that launches his or, own, his or her own practice is that, uh, you know, they may start out with a couple of clients and they, um, they'll provide excellent service to them and that, that lawyer will work around the clock uh, and gradually they'll start to get a few more clients trickling in. Uh, next thing you know, that client has, or that attorney has more work than they could handle. Uh, so maybe they bring on somebody else to take the overflow. But the problem with that model uh, is that it requires that attorney uh, to be intimately involved in every single matter. Uh, they're, the, uh, they're the brains. Uh, they're the ones who are doing everything, uh, all the business development uh, and all the actual client service work. And that's okay for a while, uh, sustainable for a short time. Uh, but um, you know, when I started this business, I was still a relatively young man. Uh, and, <laughs> and I'm thinking decades out into the future and I just can't sustain that, that kind of lifestyle. Um, for decades, uh, you know, I, I had a, a son who I was coaching. And, uh, I was coaching my son's basketball team, and I wanted to be there for him. Uh, I wanted to be there to watch his water polo games. Uh, I wanted to be able to take vacations and travel. Uh, I wanted to be able to have time off uh, and do things on the weekend. Uh, I, I wanted to, I didn't want to build a company on the strength of a team, uh, not just on the strength of, of myself. Uh, so, so I decided very, very early on that rather than going the, the, the traditional route of, well, the traditional route that other attorneys always uh, seem to, to take, uh, I, um, I, I, I built a team from day one. Uh, so my, my first hire was someone who I'd worked with at a previous job. I actually met him through a, a co-op experience, uh, which is sort of like an internship. Uh, and uh, he and I really hit it off. Uh, we worked well together. Uh, and I started my business right around the time that he was graduating law school. Uh, so the timing was perfect. And he came on as my as my first hire. Um, after that, I realized that a lot of my clients were telling me that, you know, they'll come to us with contract needs or formation needs or something like that. And during the conversation, they would say, hey, you know, by the way, we really could use some help with, with our trademark. Can you help us with that? And I would have to say, no, but I can find somebody for you. Well, I got tired of saying that. Uh, so, uh, so my next hire after that was somebody who was an intellectual property attorney. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, that, that's kind of the way that we grew. Uh, whenever there was a need uh, and whenever there was a way that we could expand our practice uh, or support the people who were already on our team uh, to do a better job in, in providing service to our clients, uh, that was the, the step that we took. Uh, at this point, we are a team of about 10 people right now. Uh, awesome. And uh, yeah, it, it, it is awesome. Uh, and, um, and and I find that, you know, we we had 10 people at this time last summer as well. Uh, and that summer was the most productive time uh, with respect to the productivity, to, to, to the work product, to, to revenue, uh, to, to, to new sales. Uh, when we're fully staffed, uh, we are 
um, we really fired off cylinders uh, and, uh, and, and we really hit our goals. Uh, so it's really exciting to be part of a team of our, even though a small business. Yeah, I'm hearing like two major themes here. One is always listen to the market, right? Uh, this seems like the recurring theme in uh, in your story is the market kept telling you to do stuff and you kept showing up and doing it, uh, bringing, bringing new staff on to solve new business problems. Uh, and that's great. And the second is, um, it is uh, it is vital on a, from a scalability perspective, but also from a satisfaction perspective to work with a team. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, uh, the solopreneur journey, the, the, it sounds like the, um, uh, the tutoring company uh, was, a, was a solo-ish kind of gig. Uh, and then you went into your law firm and you decided not to do that again. Can you tell us a little bit more about that decision process and, and kind of how that went down? Is, is that a question on why I want to build a team as opposed to building as a, as a solopreneur? Well, so you're, you, you had um, some things that influenced you. you. You know, we heard a little bit about your story that you wanted a different kind of lifestyle that only a team would support. Um, but when you, um, that, that must have come from uh, beyond the intellectual exercise, that must have been informed by your background as a tutor. Um, can you talk about some of the the challenges that maybe you faced when you were doing it all by yourself? You know, I don't think that um, I, I, think, I think maybe the reason that I misheard or misunderstood the question uh, is that um, that I'm not sure that that I that my desire to, to build a team and company council was born in my days as a tutor. I oh, think that probably was born somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, I mean, we th th there were team elements uh, to, to my staff uh, at, uh, at the tutoring place. Um, so that wasn't what went wrong. <laughs> oh. gotcha. um, but um, no, but I, you know, I, I saw, I've always been, um, I, I've always been somebody who's really into sports uh, from a really early age. Uh, you know, I played uh, Pee Wee football uh, and I was involved in some sort of team sport uh, for, for most of my life. Mm. Uh, and um, and I think a lot of my ooh, a lot of my beliefs about teamwork come from from that experience. Um, you know, my um, I played high school football. I, you know, I'm here. I'm sounding like Al Bundy, but uh, <laughs> but it's relevant. I promise you. Uh, I, I played high school football uh, for a um, for a legendary coach. Uh, uh, who um, they made an ESPN documentary about about, about the last season of this uh, of his career continuing at my high school. Uh, at one point, the school went on a fifty-two uh, to nothing uh, win streak, uh, which wow. um, is remarkable. And what this coach would tell us, so I was a part of this team, all right. And what this coach would tell us every year uh, is, you know, this is the worst bunch of jet. This is the worst bunch of athletes that I've ever seen. <laughs> There is the least amount of individual talent on this squad of any CB West team that I've, that I've ever coached. And then he would say, but that's all right, because we don't win as individual talent, we win as a team. Uh, and then he would proceed to teach us how to win as a team. And all the drills we did from that point on were all, were all team oriented drills. So, I mean, whether or not we were actually the least athletic, I, I mean, I, I guess. One of those times had to be true. <laughs> One of those classes had to be the least athletic, but but that wasn't really the point. I mean, he right. uh, it was so important to him to bring all of us together, regardless of our individual talents, to bring all of us together to operate as one. And the success was was extraordinary. Uh, so I think you know when you get that kind of lesson as a, a, a as a teenager, uh, it, it kind of sticks with you, and you, and you realize that that the, the, the teams in virtually any setting, teams outperform individual stars. Mm. Uh, so, uh, and then if you can get a team of stars that can work together, uh, like I happen to have now, uh, that, that, that's the best of both. That's awesome. So, um, Bernard, I want to uh, thank you for your time here. One of the things that um, we often ask uh, of our uh, guests is if folks wanted to reach out to you and learn more about what you do and, and, and who should contact you uh, or how they should contact you, can you give us just a, a, a quick summary of who should reach out and then how should they get to you? Sure. Um, well, we're located in Pennsylvania uh, and we are licensed to practice law in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. Uh, so if you're listening to this, to this program and you have legal questions or 
uh, if you um, are running your company and uh, and, and you want the support of a law firm that, that's that's been there and 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 can help you to uh, to succeed and to, to achieve your goals and to, to stay protected, um, I, I would love to have that conversation. Uh, you can find us on the internet at www.companycouncil.law. Uh, you can reach me by at email uh, via email, I should say, uh, at uh, B Williams at companycouncil.law, or you can give us a call at the office at 484 325 5660. Perfect. Thank you, Bernard, for your time today. I really appreciate your insights into teamwork and, and how you got your practice started. It was my pleasure, Brian. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Consulting Trap. If you have suggestions for future episodes or would like to be a guest on our show, please send me an email at brian at podcastchef.com. That's B-R-I-A-N at P-O-D-C-I-S-T-C-H-E-F dot com. Before we go, we'd like to thank the sponsor of our show, Podcast Chef. Podcast Chef helps turn ordinary podcasting into a revenue-generating lead magnet for your consulting business. Our podcasting done for you service takes away the headache of starting up and running your own podcast. Reach out now to take advantage of our 30-day money-back guarantee. Visit us at podcastchef.com to find out how our team of experts can help you leverage podcasting to take your business to the next level.